What up, friends? I only know good behavior. And today we're going to be reviewing Purple Kiss's newest mini album, BXX. This is the sixth mini album by K pop girl group Purple Kiss. They've been around for a few years now, starting back in 2021 with their intriguing debut single Ponzona, and most recently coming back with their Cabin Fever mini album, and mini album that I thought was a really interesting change of pace for their sound and was pretty elaborate and different for the scene. Now, Purple Kiss have always been good, I think, but they haven't always been consistent in how how good they are. The Hide and Seek and Cabin Fever mini albums are them at their best, and the other ones, while not bad, are just a bit more generic in comparison and don't exactly showcase their strengths as well as the other two mini albums. The title tracks tend to be pretty good on the whole, but the b-sides can be a bit hit or miss at times. Other than the ones on Hide and Seek and Cabin Fever, they just don't always fit Purple Kiss's vibe all that well. However, they're still great vocalists and performers, and you can always rely and count on them for something fun whenever they drop a new project. This new mini album is unfortunately a bit more in the lull camp. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more in the lines of Mem Mem and Geeky Land, where like the title track tends to be pretty good. There's a few other good songs on here as well, but on the whole, the project just does not come together as strongly as some of their other mini albums. It's still pretty fun, but compared to like their Sweet Juice and Zombie eras, it just doesn't impress as much. The intro, Crush, is actually pretty fun though, I have to say, having this very vibrant pop sound to it, while also having this sort of like quirky and off-kilter instrumental behind the scenes too. The sample and the fuzzy twist on the background vocals and synths are really fun and punchy. They have a really interesting sound to them that I think adds a lot of attitude to this track overall. It may be short, but it's a pretty slick opener, all things considered. Next up, we get to the title track or the main single of the mini album, BBB, and I have to say, this might be one of my favorite title tracks by Purple Kiss. It has sort of like a modern take on Y2K pop alongside some like funk pop driven instrumentals here and there as well, and the vocals on that pre-chorus especially just swell in that classic Purple Kiss fashion. There's a huge electro bass presence on this song that I really like, and the chorus, while simple, is insanely catchy, and I also really love the hints of that playful piano that are going on during the chorus too. The drum kit on this track, as again, especially during the chorus, is super snappy and satisfying to listen to. I think it really rounds out the instrumental on this track really well. Yuki's vocals in particular really gel with this sound. I think this and, of course, the zombie era as well, like, she really nails this sort of, like, funk-driven pop stuff. I also think this is a really good follow-up to the intro song sound. It follows that up really well. It's very consistent with it. I actually wish the mini album on the whole was more like this. This sort of funk-driven dance pop also really fits the lyrics as they're basically talking about living freely and, you know, people complain about them or their lifestyles or whatever, but as long as they're having fun living, that's all that really matters. You know, they might label you as bad for living how you want to and living your own life, but, you know, who cares? And I think the line, the truth is you are born that way, can't change, it sums that up well. Bittersweet is definitely more in line with your more typical contemporary K-pop song, for better and for worse. It still has a drive to it, and the darker and more sultry groove during the chorus is pretty compelling. It does get a bit more generic as the chorus progresses, though, having some fairly standard synth-driven rhythms, and the progression on this track is just kind of the tried-and-true K-pop formula, which is a bit uninteresting compared to the stuff that they've done prior. I think the verses are pretty cool, though, having a pretty bass-driven groove while also being a bit sparse as well, adding a tinge of like emptiness or loneliness to the track. It almost has a sort of like after the club dancing on an empty dance floor vibe to it or something. I will say though that the bridge or drop on this track is also pretty generic. I just don't really think it was necessary. It doesn't really even fit the sound of the song overall all that much and it's kind of predictable, to be honest. Toy Boy is definitely more in line with the current scene in K-pop and contemporary R&B with the trap drums and the sort of fluttering synths in the background. The vocals are pretty smooth, and I do think that it has this sort of like mix of delicate tones while also this sort of like maybe femme fatale vibes as well as it, it seems like in the lyrics they're just kind of trying to find this like submissive boy that they can have as an accessory or something like that, so that's pretty fun. But instrumentally, I don't think it's all that compelling. In a way, that's kind of all I really have to say about it. It's kind of your just, you know, tried and true K-pop contemporary R&B track. You know, it's fine, and I think the lyrics are pretty fun and intriguing. However, I don't think it really excels in any way. 
Heart Attack is definitely one of the better songs on the mini album, though, as we're kind of going back to the funk driven pop again. The song starts very isolated before we build up to that shimmering chorus. The bass, guitar, and drums sound really natural here. I think it's a really nice, warm sound to perfectly round out and balance out this again, funk-driven dance pop instrumental. It also perfectly frames the vocals on this track too, I think. The synth flourishes also give some digital balance to the overall very warm instrumental, having a very daydream-like effect on the song that I think really fits the love-struck lyrics here. It's a sweet and innocent song overall, however, I do think the more natural instrumental does actually provide some grounded maturity to it. Cheyenne's vocals especially really shine on this track too. Of course, we do have a sort of tried and true K-pop ballad to end the mini album with Voyager. However, this one does have a bit more of a guitar edge to it that at least kind of makes it stand out. The power ballad instrumental is fine, but again, it's just not something that is super exciting or different compared to what we've seen before in K-pop. For a group like Purple Kiss, which tends to have some pretty provocative songs, especially when we go into tracks like Sweet Juice from the previous mini album, I kind of expect something more at this point. In a way, the light guitar picking before we move on to the chorus does kind of have an end of movie credits vibe to it, which I guess does fit the end of the project, but again, it's just not anything super unique. The lyrics are fairly in line with the live your life how you want to live it theme of the mini album overall, however it does feel a bit jarring when it's kind of put at the end here and it's like not about love and like relationships and stuff like that when all the other songs are. It just kind of comes out of left field in a way. You know, overall this mini album was fine. There's honestly nothing I really dislike about the mini album, but it does have the usual Purple Kiss problem of not really sticking to a core sound or aesthetic to make everything click together. I also find that this new direction overall wasn't as compelling as the Cabin Fever mini album that came before it. I do like the funk driven pop songs on here, but the B-sides especially just do not match up to the B-sides of that previous mini album. Songs like the intro, BBB, and Heart Attack were definitely the sounds that I was wanting from the mini album, so to have have only like half of the songs really go for that was a bit disappointing. Those songs actually kind of reminded me of their track Zombie from Hide and Seek, except without the sort of B-movie horror angle to it, which might be why I like these tracks so much. Uh, they were a bit more fleshed out and compelling compared to the more tried and true K-pop and contemporary R&B stuff that were on the rest of the B-sides. They might not have a full album under their belt just yet, but when that time comes, I really hope they kind of hone in on one particular sound, preferably maybe the ones on like BBB or Sweet Juice, and just really stick to it and play to the their strengths. Genre hopping is totally fine, you know, it's actually one of the reasons why I really like K-pop. I get to see different people's takes on different genres all the time. However, more often than not, a lot of the genre hops that Purple Kiss does, especially in their B-side, don't always play to their strengths. Their title tracks are pretty consistently great, I think. However, their B-sides, while consistently good, are also consistently not much more than that. That may sound harsher than I'm intending it to, and I, I really do like the group, but I feel like they need to kind of rein it in a little bit more. But all that being said, I am feeling a decent six on this newest mini album by Purple Kiss. Of course, we do stuff to talk about album covers on this show, and this one's okay. You know, it does kind of have that sort of like party Y2K vibe a little bit, kind of more like the clubby electronic stuff and things like that. Uh, I do think the font is pretty cool. You know, the color scheme of all like really harsh black with the sort of foil effect or like, yeah, I guess it's a more like that. Uh, the mustard cat funny folk with the sort of shimmering whites, and then we have the blue sort of neon. I think it, it's pretty decent. Composition-wise, though, I just think it's maybe a little bit boring, uh, but it, it's a decent enough fit for the project, I guess. But of course, those are just my thoughts on this newest mini on by Purple Kiss. What did you guys think? Do you think this was kind of a good next step for their sound? Do you think this is something that maybe they should commit to more in the future? Or would this also kind of a mixed bag for you as well, despite being decent on the whole? Let me know, be sure to like, come subscribe, ring the bell, or I'll ding you up for bad behavior, and until the next one, farewell.